an assassination attempt on Donald Trump boosted his chances of winning the upcoming presidential election this November in the US. So Bitcoin jumped over the weekend, the US dollar gained at the start of this week and US futures are in the positive at the wake of this weekend's tragic events in the US. So welcome to the new week of trading full of data, events and earnings. This is Swiss Codes Daily Market Talk. So Donald Trump got this close to being killed this weekend while he was giving his speech in an election rally. So he was certainly very, very lucky that the bullet just grazed his ear, but he was mostly praised for well, showing strength and for showing defiance only minutes after being shot in the ear. So the image of strong and heroic Donald Trump with blood on his face, fists up in the air with an American flag just waving behind him while the security guards were just taking him away from the tragic scene while well, marked this weekend. And all of the headlines and came as a perfect, but a perfect contrast to old and weakened Biden over the past weeks. So cherry on top of all that, Trump said that, well, he would attend the Republican National Convention next week, despite being shot. So all in all, even though the assassination incident on Donald Trump was shocking and traumatizing for the entire world and spurred the worries of a deeply divided America where political violence is taking over, well, it greatly boosted the chances that Donald Trump will probably win the presidential election in November from 61% before the shooting to 67% after the shooting according to predicted. And if history is any indication, such events, such shooting events, have been a boon for a candidate in the past because in 1981, for example, while well, Republicans won 525 to 13 in electoral votes following the assassination attempt on Reagan. Now in the markets, Bitcoin, which has been struggling big time since the beginning of June, well, jumped past the $62,000 level just after the Trump incident on a certain flight to safety, certainly, and also because Donald Trump backs the asset. The US dollar opened the new week slightly higher against most majors, and gold, the safe haven gold, remains surprisingly unreacted to the weekend news. US futures, on the other hand, are trading in the positive territory this morning as S&P 500 did great, great, great under Trump's rule and increased odds for well, Donald Trump victory in the upcoming presidential election are also perceived as good news for the market. So voila, that's it really. Happy Monday, guys. Now, it feels like it was ages ago after a long, long weekend of news and political chaos, but another set of good news for well, the financial markets came last week, remember? When the Federal Reserve President, Jerome Powell, said, for example, that the only risk to the US economy today is no longer inflation, but also the cooling jobs market. So a speech last week that sent the probability of a September interest rate hike from the Fed to above 90%, even though Powell didn't want to give any further hint regarding the timing of the first interest rate cut. Then the latest set of CPI figures from the US came in softer than expected by analysts, and investors just greatly overlooked the stronger than expected PPI figures released last Friday, but it's worth noting that still producer prices in the US unexpectedly jumped last month because the PPI rose from 24 to 2.6% on a yearly basis, while core PPI jumped from 2.6 to 3% last month. So suiting that the Fed is no longer only focused on inflation, but it does not mean obviously that they will completely disregard the inflation numbers moving forward because they still matter and they matter a lot. But anyway, the markets didn't panic much on the PPI we last Friday, but decided to focus on a soft set of sentiment index from Michigan that showed softer inflation expectations and also murkier sentiment moving forward. As such, the US two-year yield dived to 
4.45% and the US 10-year yield closed last week below the 4.20% mark. The S&P 500 hit a fresh record level, Nasdaq gained, but the real winner of well, last week was the small caps in the US. The Russell 2000 index jumped more than 6% in just three trading sessions last week and traded at the highest level since January 2022 on hope that the Federal Reserve rate cuts would benefit more to the small caps in the US who need this financial easing than to big technology that didn't really care about the high financing costs and high interest rates to be perfectly honest with you, thanks to the AI craze. Now this week, investors' attention shifts from the Federal Reserve and economic data to earnings in the US. So release on Friday, the first big bank earnings were mixed. JP Morgan fell 1.21% on Friday despite reporting a record profit after a surge in deal making in the second quarter boosted investment fees by 50 percent yet expenses exceeded the market expectations and net interest income at jp morgan came below estimates then citigroup fell 1.81 percent as jp morgan city benefited from increased investment banking revenue that jumped 60 percent at city but expenses didn't please investors while wells fargo tanked six percent on friday despite better than expected earnings and better than expected revenue because net interest income there fell nine percent as customers preferred higher yielding products so today well, we have Goldman Sachs and BlackRock. They are due to report their second quarter earnings. Tomorrow, Morgan Stanley. Thursday, Netflix and TSM. And finally, on Friday, we will see American Express reveal how it did last quarter. Now, all I know is that earnings, especially the big technology earnings, better meet and beat expectations for the rally in major U.S. indices to continue. Because otherwise, even the Federal Reserve rate cut bets may not prevent a correction that could well, stretch up to 10% according to many bears out there. Now elsewhere, inflation data came in slightly higher than expected by analysts in France and in Spain last Friday. And the data cemented the idea that the European Central Bank will just stay pat when it needs this Thursday. Now, traders will be looking for any hints or any hints of another rate cut in September in the Eurozone. The euro dollar is slightly lower this morning and that on the back of a broadly stronger US dollar after Trump's assassination attempt. But, but the rising odds of a September rate cut from the US Federal Reserve remain well, mostly supportive of a further rise in the euro dollar. And we can see the euro dollar settle within the 110 to 112 range between now and September. Across the channel, well, Brits will be revealing their latest CPI numbers on Wednesday this week. And according to some predictions on some websites, well, headline CPI in the UK may have eased below the 2% mark in June, which could eventually spur the Bank of England's rate cut expectations for the August meeting and bring the top sellers near the 130 psychological mark against the US dollar back in the market. In China, well, this week starts with bad news, really. The second quarter GDP growth died below 5% to 4.7% level. Retail sales grew slower than expected. And the slump in Chinese health prices accelerated. So the Communist Party will hold a once in five years meeting this week to address the issues in the country and con eventually come up with some measures to help give investors some hope regarding the future of the Chinese growth, especially measures to stop bleeding in the crumbling property market and also measures to further boost production in China to make up for the feeble consumer sentiment that we have there. So it's certainly why the CSI 300 index is better bid this morning despite bad news while the US crude opens the new week under a decent selling pressure as copper futures hardly find buyers to test the 50-day moving average to the upside on fear that the sluggish Chinese growth will eventually keep the global demand prospects for copper under a certain downside pressure and limit any gains that we could see there. So this is all for this 
Monday. I'm İpek Öz Kardeşkaya and thank you for joining me and thank you for all your beautiful and supportive comments. I hope this episode of Market Talk has been helpful and it has been insightful to you. So please do not hesitate to leave your comments, your reactions and your questions below as usual. Follow us on Instagram, on X and on LinkedIn for regular market updates. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily market comments. And please, please don't forget to hit the like button on these videos to let us know that you enjoy them. So I will meet you again tomorrow. And until then, good day trading.